Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So today I want to talk about AUK, which is a scripting language for manipulating data in files. Now today we often see that people are using spreadsheets for holding all kinds of information and they're trying to process that data inside of the spreadsheet and they might have multiple worksheets open and there's lots of stuff going on. And I think people have generally forgotten or maybe they didn't even know about the power of AUK and how it can automate a lot of tasks for you. So AUK basically reads in data from a file. It can be space separated, it can be comma separated, it can be tab separated, and it processes that data and you can manipulate it and then output something else. So if you're the kind of person that manipulates data for your job or even for fun, then I think you'll find this interesting. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So what we do is we go over to the command line and I'm basically going to show you practical examples of working with AUK and these will be kind of a stepping stone to just teach you the fundamentals of how it works. So let's go straight to the command line. Okay, so here we are on the Linux command line. Now, I've got a text file here called uh, lsuserbin.txt. It's basically a list of all of the binary files that you find in user slash bin and then the number of bytes that file is. It's the size of the file. And this is quite a long file. In fact, if we do a word count minus L on that file, you can see there are 664 different lines there, each describing one file and its size. Now, AUK takes in a scripting language as a, as a program so that you can process files exactly like this. And the simplest program is just to print out the file. So that's what we're gonna do first of all. So you start with AUK, single quotes to specify this is the program you're doing. All actions in AUK start inside of a curly brackets, curly braces, and we'll talk more about why that is in a minute because there's other parts to the, the syntax that we can put outside these curly brackets. So that's it, you just say print, and then we'll use our file that we're going to look at. So if we run that now, it will basically just print out the file. And that's what it did. So there you go. Very quickly, it just printed out every single line of that file. Now, just to introduce you to a thing, uh, the way AUK works is it treats each each a word as a field separated by a space by default. You can change that if we were dealing with, for example, comma separated files. But to access each field, you use the dollar and then the field number. And actually, dollar zero is the whole line. So we're gonna run this program again, and in fact, it will do exactly the same thing because it's dollar zero, which is every single line. But if I just do dollar one, then we'll only see the binary name come out. There we go, you notice there are no numbers now on the right-hand side of that. And if I do dollar two, we'll just get the file sizes. So there you go. So it works by processing a line of text and then splitting up into fields and then you can do things with those different fields. Now I said earlier on, for example, that let's change this to one because I want to print out the name that you can do things outside of the brackets. What you can do outside of the brackets is pattern matching. So for example, if we do this, so notice how I've got the forward slash GCC forward slash, this, the forward slash says this is the beginning of a regular expression and then uh, the end of it is where the other slash is and then print is the action. So what it will do is whenever it matches the word GCC, it will print out the name of that file. And if you wanna know more about regular expressions, I have a video on this channel about uh, grep and regular expressions. But now if we do this, we just see the files with GCC. That's much shorter, just four, four lines there. And just like all regular expressions, you can apply different things to it. For example, the up, uh, sort of the up arrow here thing is for uh, the beginning of a line. So we can say any line that begins in a W, print that out. And there we can see those uh, lines there that just start with a W. And we could go on doing this all, all kinds of different things we could look at just by matching it on you know different letters. So if we wanna see anything that begins with WS, then we just get those on. So you, any regular expression you can put in there, uh, we could do anything that, let, let's see, anything that has the word uh, let's just put the word path in there. Then you can just see those. So anything that matches that regular expression will then get printed out. And equally, we could print out the file size and the file name. And we could do that by saying comma dollar two. So we're actually getting both of those printed out, but now it's individual fields rather than just printing out the whole word. Now, what's interesting is, is that these, uh, are, the grep is, uh, orc is clever enough to know that the, some of these are numbers. So for example, I could say, well, let's divide this by 1024. So at the moment, this is being given to me in bytes. If we look here, this is in bytes. 
And let's say I wanted to divide it in 1024 to get it in, in K, in kilobytes. So I'm actually saying print out uh, two, but divide it by 1024. So now we're starting to do some processing on the file. And as you see now, when we print that out, it says 30 point 4688 34.1. So we know those are the uh, sizes in K. In fact, we could add on here at the end, just in uh, quote the word letter K, and then we go there, we've got a nice uh, K number. So you can actually do lots of different things in terms of actually starting to process these files. And you can actually match on multiple things. So for example, we could say here, everything in path uh, and, so you do two ampersand signs, I want to check $2, so that's the, the size field, and make sure that it's greater than, so what should we say, greater than 15,000 uh, bytes, okay? So that will now print out exactly the same thing, but some of those files won't be matched. So there we go, we can see that three of them are, are been printed out because they are greater than uh, 15 uh, thousand bytes okay now before we go on further with or I want to mention this uh, deal here that you can get at the moment a machine learning and data science training bundle now there are eight different courses over 48 hours of content and it's going to cover things like tensorflow and it covers python and it covers what's this one the regression uh, analysis statistics and machine learning there's also more down here you can see to do with r boot camp in r then there's machine learning and deep learning in r so really quite a lot of stuff here. If this kind of stuff interests you, data manipulation, data learning, data science, big data, any of those things, this looks like a pretty good deal. And this is an affiliate link, which means if you do uh, buy this course, you also help out this channel. But more importantly, you get to increase your knowledge. Now, as you can see, these programs are getting a little bit more complicated. It's not just a case of print something out. We've got regular expressions and we're checking field values and things. So we can actually put this all into a script and then say to Orc, please run this script. So let's write a little program called, um, let's call it path uh, 15K, because that's what we're looking at. Anything with the word path in it that's greater than 15K, and we can call it AWK Orc. And before we go into it, let's just cut and paste this part of the text here so that we've got it available to us in our program. Okay, so nano, and then now we're gonna do is just paste that in there. Now you can get rid of the single quote at the beginning of the end. And so there's one line of this program, basically when you match path, and the two is greater than 15,000, 15K, then print out the name and do that K conversion there. Simple as that, so we can save that. And now here we do awk minus F to tell it the name of the file, and then the file we're gonna run it on, ls uh, user bin. And it does exactly the same thing, but now our command line is a lot simpler, but we're running an actual awk script. And once you get into awk script, you can actually find out you can do lots of interesting things. So for example, if we go back into our little program here and we, uh, we add another line. So let's say we look for everything that begins with the letter A and is greater than 25K print that out as well. So we're just adding in a second line with a second set of matches and then a second set of things that we want it to do. And so we can just uh, save that and we can run that now the same. And now we also get things that begin with the letter A that are greater than, uh, what did I say, 25K. And we get the other ones that have the word path in them that are uh, greater than 15K. And they're all listed there now and they're matched each line of that file that we're going through. Now, if you look at this, you can see that the K sizes are pretty, you know, three three digits here. You know, it's 42.156, you know, for example, for that one there, uh, 38.0895. So these are all pretty, uh, you know, they're, it's not very human uh, readable. So in fact, let's just change this now to make it more uh, human readable. So we'll go back into this file. Now, first of all, we're gonna get rid of that line. We're not gonna do that again. Now, I actually know that there are some interesting files that begin with the word W uh, because I want to just show something about rounding up numbers. Now, in awk, there are actual functions. So there is a function called int, which basically truncates a floating point number and turns it into a uh, just a normal integer. So if this was 42 point something, it will just say 42. So we can now run this program, okay, and see now, and now we can see it just says 18K, 32K, 22K, 13K, much, much nicer, much more human readable, which is great. However, if we just modify the program again and just change this slightly to actually print out the real byte value, 
uh, divided by 1024 and then print out the uh, the rounded one let's just see here what happens what I want to show is there are some of these here that are it's, it's definitely it's truncating here's a good example it's 46 point nine seven uh, six six and that gets four for, truncated to 46 really that should be 47 this should really say 47k if we wanted a proper approximation of what you know this is just a truncation just drops off that decimal point so it would be good if we could do something clever so that we get a better representation of these numbers and this is a great way to introduce the idea of a function now inside of awk you can define a function we're going to write a function called round so this is us writing a function and we're going to pass in a parameter called uh, n which is the size and there's a quick trick you can do in math to round something up you can say n is equal to n plus 0 0.5 so we add half to it and then we truncate it okay so we're saying n is equal to the truncated version of n and then we can return it so that's the number that we're returning how does that work well if it was 42.1 if you add half onto it you get 42.6 so when you truncate that, you still get 42. But if it was 46.9 and you add half, and that goes over into 47, 47.4 or whatever, when you truncate that, you now get 47. So it's a great trick to actually get the truncation to work in the right way and also shows us how we can write a function. So the function takes in n, the number we pass in, it adds 0.5 to it, it then truncates it, and then it returns it. So now we can call the function here inside of the action part, and rather than calling int to truncate it, we can call round, dollar uh, two and of course we're dividing it by 1024 to turn it from bytes into k and it's now going to round up that number to a better one so now if we run that what do we get here we go so if we look at this one here 46.9766 is actually now 47 so we've written a function and we've done some truncation so that shows you now that with the power of awk you can write programs that can parse all kinds of lists and logs and, and comma separated files and whatever data that you've got line by line and it can actually start to process it and run function on it and actually start to do things on it. So let's have another quick example of what you can do with that. I have another file here called numbers which is just basically so what is that six numbers I've just typed in uh, there 3 7 12 15 16 and 31 well now what we can do is we can write a program that's going to read in each line and then print out all the numbers up to the number that it read in and we're going to call this uh, loop so what we're going to do is we write a function called well let's just call it print list and we're going to pass in the number which is the number we're going to read in from the line and then we're going to do a for loop. Now, for loop is very much like the for loops in C. Basically, you start with the initialization situation. So we're going to say I, set I to 1. That's a counter. Then you have the expression. You test it. How, how much, do, when does this thing uh, stop? And we're going to say stop uh, or keep going while it's less than or equal to N and stop when it's greater than N. And then finally, you have an iteration function, something that happens every loop, and in this case, it adds one. So it starts at one, keeps going till while n is less, i is less than n or equal to n, and then each time it adds one onto n. So that's the basic uh, for loop, and that's the same in C and other similar languages. And then all we're going to do is we're going to say print, but now we're going to use printf, which is kind of borrowed from the C programming language. Percent %d means give me a uh, an integer, and we're just going to print out the integer i. Okay, so that's from uh, print F, print formatted. Percent D says print out a number. Okay, it's a special format you put in here, a special number that's going to, an integer, and in this case, it's going to be I. And then all we do in the actual code for the action part, we call print list. Remember, we're in curly brackets here now. Uh, and we're going to say dollar one. Now, dollar one is going to be the first field, so it was three, seven, and all those other numbers that I put in there. So every time it reads a line, it's going to call print list, and it's going to call it with the number, the uh, the field that gets passed in. Now, one other thing we want to put in here to tidy up the output is after it's printed the list, we want to print a blank line. So again, we can use printf, which is borrowed from C. Backslash n means a new line, and that's it. So after it's printed out one, two, three, for example, for the first line, print a blank line, and then every line, it will be nicely formatted on the screen. So now we can save that and we can run it. So how do we do that? Awk minus F loop. And we're running it on the file called numbers.txt. And there you go. 1 to 3, 1 to 7, 1 to 12, 1 to 15, 1 to 16, and 1 to 31, which are the numbers that I had there in that file. And it knew to do those numbers because it read each one from the file. So imagine now if you want to write programs that takes data from a file 
And then you want to do things with that data. You want to, you know, create reports. You want to do multiplications. You want to add things up. You want to work out averages. You want to do whatever it is you want to do with those numbers. You can do it here by reading in each number and then producing a result using the ORC programming language. Okay, so there you have a gentle introduction to ORC. There are lots of things I haven't covered. This is only an introduction. Most importantly, I haven't talked about the begin and end keywords. They're special patterns that match before a file is processed and after a file is processed. And there's loads more you can do with ORC. For example, you can output that data and maybe feed it into, pipe it into another program for plotting graphs, for example, something a lot of people do if they're working uh, inside uh, spreadsheets. In fact, ORC is so powerful, you can even write small interpreters, language interpreters, or even compilers using ORC because it's so good at tokenizing the data so that you can actually process it and actually produce another language uh, and so on and so on. So I really do kind of suggest you really get into ORC and I hope this was a useful introduction to it. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.